guys, today at the main campus is Thursday, May 13th, and today we're going to go back to the same sheet you had yesterday. Unfortunately, the page numbers aren't at the top, but you're going to go, I'm looking in my packet right now, you should have already done the verse. It's the page that says, Topic A, Lesson 2, I'm the Bread of Life. So the same one you started with yesterday, the one with the heart at the bottom that says, Who am I? Okay? So um, quarter four, week seven, day four, let's dive in. Fifth grade, stop here and pray. Sixth grade, stop here and pray. Pause the video. All right, Book of John, here we go. Today we're going to be practicing that verse, so let's do it. We're going to go all the way to verse 5. I'm going to do it once with you, and then the second time you can do it on your own. Here we go. First time, do it with me, guys. You got it. Ready? Use your notes if you need to. Here it is. Ready, go. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. <coughs> Let's go. All things were made through Him. Anything made, sorry I had to take your glass, that was made. Verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Get ready. Your turn. Go. In the beginning. Let's go. Nice job. Verse 3. Ready, go. All things. Keep going. Verse 4. In him was life. Keep going. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Alright, nice job you guys. Super proud of you. Guidance from others helps bring clarity to our own ideas. That's our pattern statement. Make sure you have it written down. We're going to get guidance from a pastor today. He's going to share a sermon with us. Now the sermon is like an hour long. I'm only going to give you about three minutes of it. So flip your paper. Now you should be on the page that has the verses that we read yesterday. And we're going to listen to this pastor who is giving a sermon. He's going to read those verses. Here we go. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they, being the crowds that had enjoyed the fruit of his feeding of the 5,000 the day before, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from, e from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. 
For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this the Jews there began to grumble about him because he's... I'm going to move on over here. Here we go. Grumbling among... Oops. Sorry. Grump. I forgot to read that last... Uh, whoa. At this the Jews began Grumbling to grumble. Grumbling among yourselves, um, Jesus answered. No one... Hold on. Whoa, what's happening? Sir, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent... Sorry, guys. I totally messed it up. So, um, my slides were off, but it says, At this the Jews there began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say... How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? So, I'm going to add that here. And I am going to play this slide for you. Here we go. Let's finish it up. Grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the man in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, awesome. Here's what I want you to do now. You're going to hear a piece of this sermon. You're going to fill out your notes as you hear it. It's only like a minute of a chunk. And then you're going to discuss it. Then I'm going to show you what you're going to do for homework. Here you go. Now, there are three ideas that are presupposed by this passage before you even begin it. One is a completely different set of presuppositions about what bread is. We'll come back to that one before we're finished tonight. The second is the feeding of the 5,000, which has taken place earlier in the chapter, where Jesus has provided bread in order to set the stage for teaching that he is the bread. In other words, the feeding of the 5,000 was a sign. That is, it pointed to something, it signified something, it signified something beyond the miracle itself. And third, the background that they would have had, which isn't part of our easy cultural acceptance, the background that they would have had was the account of the feeding provided by God in the Old Testament through the miracle of manna, daily manna, six days a week. All of that is presupposed before we plunge in. Okay, great. Make sure you jot down those three notes, and then would you please um, discuss for about two minutes. Okay, last clip. Jesus is the one who gives God's life to us because he himself is God's manna. I repeat, Jesus is the one who gives God's life to us because he himself is God's manna. Verses 25 to 33. So, the people who saw the miracle 
are not aware that Jesus has crossed the lake, walking on the water and calming the storm overnight. So he's gone back to the west side of the lake. They realize the next day he's not there. So they cross again at the northern fords and seek him out. And they ask him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Verse 25. Jesus does not respond to their question. Rather, he challenges their motives. Verse 26. Very truly, I tell you, you're looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Now, remember what this means. This does not simply mean that they had a good meal. It it means that by providing them with bread, Jesus was giving them 85% of their salary. He was making them economically secure. It means that if they keep working, they've just about doubled their income. Great. Can you please pause and discuss for about two minutes the importance of what we just heard. Okay, welcome back. Now I want you to answer these two questions that are at the bottom of your paper, and I want you to discuss your answer to these two questions. Go ahead. All right, what we did in some of my classes for number two is we underlined all the places where it said I am the bread of life, and we found it in four, three to four places. Okay, then we looked at the following verses after and said, how did the crowd respond? Your homework tonight on your exit ticket is to answer using race this question. What main main idea was Jesus seeking to convey to the crowd? In other words, what was the main point of Jesus's message in this passage? There's one other question on the exit ticket that says, name all the I am statements. Guys, this is from one of the first lessons, so you can go back and look at that if you need to. All right, have a great day, and turn in the exit ticket. I will be grading it. Bye.